Hi, it's Dwyer, gamblersadvisory.com, free site, DwyerVIP.com, free site. Let's talk about Dylan White's dominant performance over Lucas Brown. But first, remember, the opinion you should follow should be your own. Just consider this video to be a second opinion from a complete stranger online. Now, let me just open by saying this is not the fight I expected. I thought, whatever the odds, that Lucas Brown was going to beat Dylan White. I thought that there was going to be a foot speed gap here. That Lucas Brown was going to be able to realize his victory over James Tony, where Tony, a technician up close, just couldn't keep Brown from moving around the ring, picking his entry point. Right? Brown has power. Brown can, when he jumps in, land power shots. I was expecting Lucas Brown versus Richard Towers, if you remember that fight, Redux, right? Where, you know, Towers was unable to find Brown with his jab because Brown moves too well. And Brown was able to pick his spots, fill in the gaps, land big shots, right? at times, and then wear down his opponent. Now, that's not the fight we got. A great jab's a beautiful thing, and the fight we got was a very dominant, very sharp Dylan White landing his jab, right? Dictating spacing, busting up Lucas Brown's eyes early. When Lucas Brown, who cannot get out the way of Dylan White's jabs. In other words, the jab to me is the thing that opens the door here. Right? When Lucas Brown tries to jump inside, Dylan White, who's very savvy, moves with him. In other words, you'll notice Lucas Brown tries to come inside. Dylan White is able to move away. The two guys move in tandem. Brown is really never able to close the gap. This is while White is beating him up from distance, right? White, like Deontay Wilder, likes a little bit of a cushion. He's able to maintain that cushion throughout, right? Brown is never able to do a sudden attack and rough up Dylan White. Things that surprised me. I was surprised, very surprised, by how wide the hand speed gap was. I wasn't expecting it to be that wide. It was very wide. Dylan White had the faster hands, and he had the faster hands by a very wide margin. I was also surprised by the fact that Dylan White was able to land that jab with regularity. Right? I was expecting Lucas Brown to be better at spacing. Right? To have the jab end here. And then for Brown to be able to come in with counterattacks. No, that jab throughout the fight is landing on Brown's face. And it's a little bit jarring. Because Brown, at times, doesn't even have a hand up. It's as if Brown was expecting White's jab to end here. And he was surprised. He, he couldn't read the spacing. He was surprised that the jab was hitting him in the face. Right? Let me also say, too, that I was very impressed. And I was surprised by the of Dylan White's movement. Brown has no foot speed advantage, right? Dylan White is literally outmaneuvering him in the ring, right? The fight could have even gone worse for Lucas Brown. I mean, Brown gets dominated to the point where I didn't give Brown a round. But it could have been worse because Dylan White throws some home run type right hands that barely missed Brown. You'll notice Dylan White setting up 
a right hand. He ends the fight on a left hook. But White's real game was to set up his right hand. Only as he threw it, Brown was savvy enough to roll with it a little bit. So that didn't really hurt him as bad as I thought the jab was every round. Right? So I know the reports are going to be that Lucas Brown looks slow, unprepared, and sluggish. I believe British heavyweight David Hay has already given a post-fight assessment where he said that Brown looked like he didn't have a plan. Let me offer an alternative explanation. And let me just say, dominant performance by Dylan White. Right? The reason Brown lost is because White was dominant. No question about it. But let me just offer another explanation. You know, there's a reason you start slow. There's a reason why guys like Bernard Hopkins <clears throat> would, early in a fight, not throw a lot of punches. It's because guys are figuring out the lay of the land. They're figuring out the spacing. You'll notice even knockout artists like Golovkin, in the first half of the first round, he'll come out, he won't throw a lot of punches, right? These guys will go into a fight and they'll spend that first round having a feeling out round, right? Now, this fight starts too fast for Lucas Brown. Lucas Brown is trying to figure, it, figure out the spacing. It's one man's opinion. Lucas Brown is trying to figure out the spacing. And before he can, before he can figure out the full extent of Dylan White's ring coverage, because White's able to hit you from distance, right? He gets hit with several jabs. You'll notice one eye gets bloodied up. I believe the rest of the fight for him is a fight where he has limited vision. Right? It's like driving in a rainstorm with bad windshield wipers. I don't think Lucas Brown could see when Dylan White was coming in with that jab. He certainly doesn't have the jab timed. He doesn't have any real defense for the jab. And this is a fighter who was able to easily avoid James Tony's jab. Right? The same punch that decimates Evanda Holifield. Right? Tony, of course, famously knocks out Evanda Holifield. Right? Lucas Brown was able to avoid Richard Towers' jab. Lucas Brown has made a career of knowing the spacing. So when a guy's throwing a jab, Brown, who is mobile, normally is able to step back away from it. Right? Think Vitaly Klitschko. He's able to step back and lean. His game's not having his hands up and blocking it with his hands. No, his game is <coughs> having you throw, being outside of what you throw, then coming in with power shots. And Brown does hit hard. But here, Brown's getting hit with the jabs. It's as if he couldn't see them coming. Right? And the problem is... Dylan White throws one of the better jabs in the heavyweight division, right? For those keeping score here, I feel, and I believe the world's going to figure this one out, that Joseph Parker, and yes, I know he has had elbow surgery, but I believe Joseph Parker throws the best jab in the heavyweight division. You have some good jabs out there, I think. The Furies, both Huey and Tyson, have excellent jabs, right? Dylan White's jabs among the better jabs in the heavyweight division. He pummels. That's the word. He pummels Lucas Brown with it. Lucas Brown can't see it coming. He's beaten up. Then White starts to raise the ante. Fifth round. You see White throwing home run level right hands. They don't quite land, but 
White's dominating at that point on the scorecard, and it's not enough for White. He's going for the KO. Right? The part of Lucas Brown's game where he uses foot speed is negated by his blindness, by the fact that White takes away Brown's eyes literally in the first two rounds of this fight. I'm guessing if Brown had to do this over again, he would come in a little bit lighter. He did look heavy. He did look bloated. He would come in a little bit lighter. Right? He too must have been surprised by White's foot speed. He would come in a little bit lighter. He would figure out spacing. He'd spend more time in the first two rounds figuring out spacing. In other words, not being there to get hit with the jab. Figuring out where Dylan White's jab ends. Also, if White... If Brown were to do this again, I think Brown would have to realize that he needs to be more sudden with Dylan White. Right? In other words, Brown's outside. He's getting hit with the jab. Then when he tried to come inside, wasn't sudden. You didn't think it was a Mike Tyson type move inside. No, he's, he's coming inside and Brown, much more athletic than I thought. Right? I admit I underestimated Dylan, excuse me, Dylan White. I admit I underestimated Dylan White. Right? Dylan White was masterful in moving away from Brown as Brown came in. So let me just say, on a scale of one to five, I give Dylan White's performance five stars. I thought it was really masterpiece level stuff. I was wrong on this fight. For me, the storyline, my takeaway, is that White's jab really surprised Lucas Brown. It blinded him early. It took Brown out of his game. It left Brown looking sluggish and slow because Brown couldn't see the punches coming. It opened the door for the rest of Dylan White's arsenal. Right? I admit Dylan White has much better mobility much more of a back foot game <clears throat> than I gave him credit for. Let's talk about where this leaves the heavyweight division because I understand White wants to be champ. White has two guys in his crosshairs. He wants Joshua. He feels that he was injured in that fight. Right? Just Google Dylan White's comments about shoulder problems he had in that fight, right? And I got to tell you, the version of Dylan White who Joshua beat wasn't this version, right? White also wants to fight Deontay Wilder. Let me say this. Be careful what you for. First, with regard to Joshua, let's remember how that Joshua fight ends. Joshua gets up close on Dylan White. Dylan White likes space. He's able to keep Lucas Brown at the end of a jab. Right? If you get inside of his jab, Dylan White's going to have problems. Right? Joshua, I believe, knows, especially after the first fight, that if he gets close enough to Dylan White and is able to jump inside on Dylan White, if he gets Dylan White up against the ropes, <clears throat> which Lucas Brown, quite frankly, was unable to do effectively, he's going to find a version of Dylan White who's not as effective as Dylan White is when he has you in the middle of the ring at the end of a jab. Let me say this about fighting Deontay Wilder. Understand. Wilder, like White, has problems with guys who can get inside. Think Luis Ortiz. Right? But Wilder is very hard to beat. <clears throat> but very hard to beat. From the outside in. In other words, if Dylan White needs a cushion, and if he's going to give a cushion to Deontay Wilder, 
That's the wrong guy to give a cushion to. Right? Wilder hits hard, folks. That straight right hand is an A-plus punch. Right? It's probably the best punch in the heavyweight division. <clears throat> One man's opinion, I know the Joshua people are cringing here. <clears throat> if Wilder has 12 rounds in which to fight you from the outside, in other words, you're not going to close the gap, get low, get underneath him, but you're going to try to actually have a shootout with him from distance. You're going to give him an opportunity to extend his arms then you're going to have problems, right? So style-wise, I think White has against Joshua and Wilder, dare I say, I would give him a better chance of beating Joshua, who's already beaten him, than I would Dylan White. Now, that's one man's opinion. We'll see how the chips fall. Understand, White certainly has put himself in the discussion for fighting both of those heavyweight champions. Let me also say too, that I do expect Joseph Parker to be front and center in the discussion because I still expect Parker to beat whatever the odds. And I understand I'm taking the underdog, but I do expect Parker to beat Anthony Joshua. I'm expecting Parker to have the mobility that we didn't see Lucas Brown have in this fight. In other words, I'm not expecting Joshua to be able to land his jab against Joseph Parker. I'm not expecting Joshua to be able to get his timing, the timing that would come off the rhythm of him landing his jab against Joseph Parker. Let's see what happens. Anyway, Dominant performance by Dylan White. I think Lucas Brown's vision went early. I think his game then went. Right? Lucas Brown should have started this fight a little bit more slowly, a little bit more carefully. He should have been a little bit more mindful of Dylan White's ability to hit him from distance with one of the division's better jabs. Right? I still have doubts on whether Dylan White up close would be able to deal with a collapsing pocket. Right? But Brown wasn't able to push that issue in this fight. Let me congratulate the Dylan White supporters. You were right. I was wrong. I look forward to White's next fight. Let me hear from you. I hope you leave your comments in the comment section to this video. Thanks for stopping by.